right, so today I'm going to show you how to make a koi fish topper. So what we're going to need is a topper. I did make some before, but I wasn't super happy with how they turned out, so I'm going to use a different lid. Um, and I did make one of these before, and I made it upside down because I wasn't paying attention to what I was doing, but still looks all right, I guess. So these are a couple that I did before for a metal type top. So we're going to start out with dyeing our fish. And what we're going to use for this is a two-part uh, casting resin. And I'm just going to use Craft Smart from Michaels. Works fine for this. And I'm going to use two colors of Let's resin dye. I'm going to use black and I'm going to use orange. And I'm going to do this one clear like this guy here. But if you want to do them in another color, you can. I did do a tutorial on doing this one. If you want me to upload that, I can just leave a comment below and I'll upload it. But I just don't want to get too repetitive with some of the stuff that I'm doing. So I'm going to make two different colors of resin. I'm going to do black and orange. So I'm going to mix up this resin and then I'll be back. I'm going to do probably about probably about 10 mil total, maybe just a little more than that. I don't think this mold will take much more than that. And this is a koi mold. I got this from Sheen, but they also sell these on Amazon. They sell these all over the place. They're pretty easy to get. And I'll be back. All right, so we have our main epoxy mixed up and we're going to mix probably about five mil of this and we're going to make this black it's our pinning probably about two drops may need a little more Sometimes black is hard to actually get to be black. That looks pretty good. And then we're going to mix up some orange. I don't think it's going to take quite this much, so I'm going to move this into another container and we're going to dye this orange and do make sure you stir your resin dye really well if you don't want streaks in it otherwise it'll be streaky and I do find the let's resin um, dye is probably one of the better ones I've used. It doesn't discolor on me and it doesn't settle in your mold, which I found some of the cheaper ones do. So sometimes it's better to spend a little bit more and get a better quality dye. I bought some from China just to try and I found that they settled and then so you have no color on the top of your mold but the bottom is saturated with color and that was pretty disappointing. All right, so I do have some bubbles in here. Um, if you have bubbles, just um, hit them with a lighter or with a little torch. But what I'm doing with this, I'm going to just layer this on the bottom of the mold with a to toothpick into little, like, little dots. So the fish has dots because I don't want the fish just to be one solid color. I want them to be different colored. So he's going to be black and orange, so we're just going to do some modeling here. I'm going to do some of his fins are going to be dark. We're going to do some dark on his head. And then we're going to top this up with the orange when we're done. 
So his fins are going to be orange or black, sorry. And I'm going to drop a few more drips in here. So pretty much all of his fins are going to be dark. And again, I put a little bit dark on his head, but you do whatever you want. If you want him to see one solid color, that's fine too. And then we're going to top this off with the orange. And you do want to try to keep your bubbles to the minimum. Otherwise, your finished product is going to have bubbles in it as well. If you have a chamber for um, removing the bubbles, that's great. I don't have one at the moment. I am planning on getting one, but right now, not happening. And do make sure you get the resin down into the bottom of your mold. Otherwise, you'll have bubbles in the bottom of your mold as well. All right, so we're going to let this cure until tomorrow. I am going to hit this with a lighter a couple times just to get rid of the bubbles. I'm going to check it again probably in half an hour and get any more bubbles that have formed on the top. I do usually tap this a few times and leave it in a place where no one's going to disturb it. And like I said, I will check it again for bubbles. It's already getting a few already, but I'll do that probably about three or four times. And this takes, I, I leave this for 24 hours to cure, and then we'll be back to finish this. All right, so we're back with our mold. And now we're going to unmold this, and this is one of my favorite parts. And here is my little fish. These always turn out so good. If you have any edges um, that are, when, like sometimes it gets overfilled a little bit, you can either just use a exacto knife or use just a, a little file. This is the little file I use. And just file off any pieces that are overlapping. And I also sand the bottom of this just because it's super smooth and it's hard to get it to adhere to your cup topper. So there's two ways that we can make these cup toppers. Um, I can show you both ways or I'll just tell you about the one and I'm going to do some more cup toppers. Um, the next probably four or five videos I'm filming are all going to be toppers because I noticed there's not a lot of topper videos and the ones that are all out there they're all somewhat similar like it's the same idea so I'm going to try to give you guys some more ideas that's my little goal anyway okay so we've got our fish ready to go here now you can do this two different ways um, this is the lid I'm going to be using you can either put this directly onto the lid and this has a straw that goes through it, so you can have this like this, or you can make it removable by using, um, these are some little silicone molds I got from Amazon. You can make um, this exactly the same way, only then the topper goes in here, and you can make it removable with magnets. This um, topper I'm going to put directly onto the lid itself. So there's a couple ways we can do this. First thing we're going to do is sand this. If you want to give the resin something to stick on with. I'm trying not to sand the sides like I just did. You just want to give it a little bit of a rough area just so it has something to stick on. And then I'm going to wipe this with alcohol just so we get any residue off. 
Okay, something else we need for this is something to plug up the hole because we don't want, um, we want to be able to use the straw. If you don't want to use your straw, you don't have to do this. You can just cover up the hole and just fill it if you don't use your straw. But what I'm going to do is just make, a, I'm just taking masking tape and I'm just going to roll it up into kind of a straw shape and I may need another piece of tape for this and we're just going to stick it in the hole there I'm going to have to make it a little larger so I'm just going to use another piece of tape I'm just going to stick that in there just like that. Make sure you don't have any gaps, otherwise your resin could pour through there. And you can use either UV resin or you can use a normal resin for this. So just whatever you prefer. I'll just show you what our little fish is going to look like. Pretty cute. So I'm going to mix up some of my UV resin with some... Um, some resin dye in blue. The resin dye I use is from Buss Resin. I find it's one of the better ones. And the color I'm going to use is going to be Peacock Blue. And I'm going to use some glitter as well. And the glitter I'm going to use is from Recollections. And it is um, marine blue. So we're just going to mix up some of the glitter, some of the UV resin, and some of the dye. And it's best to do this in a couple parts with UV resin. If you're using normal resin, just pour it all and let it set. If you're using the UV resin, kind of do it in layers. Otherwise, it's, it's hard to cure. Actually, that peacock blue is a little greener than what I thought it was going to be. So we may need another blue in there. Let's take a look. Yeah, that's a little greener than what I wanted. So let's find some other color here and put that in with, the, with it. And I've got some sky blue. We're going to add a drop of sky blue in there too. Let's see what that gives us. I don't think we need another drop. Let's do two. We're going to mix that up. I think I'll do one more drop. Just get it. Make it the color you want. Make it as dark or as light as you want. I think that was actually three more drops, but it's a fair amount of resin here, so I think we'll be all right. And I'm going to add... I'm going to put a couple drops of resin on here just to get my put my fish on. Some will go under him anyway. There we go. And I'm going to add some of my glitter here just a little bit. And then we're going to add our resin. And again, do this in thin layers. Um, if you do it too thick, I find the UV resin is a little hard to cure. So do a thin layer and then cure it under your light and then just continue doing that. So I'm going to cure this and then I'll be back to add some more. All right, so we've got our first layer of resin and we're going to add another layer. Lower that down a little so you can see a little better. 
And this layer I'm doing over the glitter. And I'm going to add some more over here. You can also add some on top of the fish too if you want it to be shiny. Or you can fill it right up if you wish. Perfect, and now I'm going to hit it with the UV light again. All right, and here is the finished topper. And here are some of the other fish toppers that I made. So you can see a few little variations of them. And I hope you've enjoyed this little fish tumbler topper tutorial. I put out at least one new video every week, so please do subscribe. If you enjoy the content, please do give me a thumbs up. It really does help. And if there's any other Tumblr toppers you'd like to see made, just leave me a comment and I will get to that. Thanks so much for watching.